Welcome to Destiny Calls. I am your host, Pastor Ursula Murphy. I'm so excited about this wonderful opportunity to join with you today in the word of the Lord. I believe God has a powerful word for his people today that I'm going to deliver unto you. So I want you to prepare yourself, call a neighbor, a friend, a coworker, get somebody together, amen, as we explore and expand the word of the Lord on today. Get your Bibles and come with me to the book of Matthew's Gospel 5, amen, Matthew's Gospel chapter 5, verse 6, amen. And we're going to go right into the word of the Lord on today. The scripture here declares that Jesus is on the mountain and he is delivering what we call the Beatitudes. Uh, but this Beatitude is nothing more than the constitution of the kingdom that he is delivering unto the people. And it's that verse six that I want to capitalize on in his address to the people. He says in Matthews five and six, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Now I just want to kind of expand on this portion of scripture for just a minute because I believe that we're living in a day and time where people are hungry. Amen. That we're hungry. All of us are hungry. We're hungry for something. Amen. And, and the problem with most of us or many of us is that what our hunger is, is not for righteousness or it's not for the kingdom of God, the things of God. But unfortunately, amen, we have gotten to a place in our walk with God where, amen, we are desiring something other than what God would like for us to desire. Amen. Somehow or another, we have um, gotten the kind of appetite Amen. We've, we've gotten a different kind of appetite. Some of us are just, uh, um, you know, we're hungry for material gain. We're hungry for success. You know, we're hungry for fame or fortune. You know, perhaps we're hungry for power positions. You know, our hunger, amen, has, has gotten away from the things of God. And now we've gotten to the place where we are hungry for some kind of material gain. We, we've, we've gotten to the place where we're hungry for something that is external, you know, something that is artificial or something that is superficial. And this is something that God has placed on my heart. He's revealed this to me, how that the body of Christ is no longer hungering for righteousness. We're no longer seeking him, his face. We're no longer hungry for his presence. Amen. But we're now going after something that's external. Amen. And, and somehow or another, we believe that this superficial, artificial uh, endeavor that we have is going to bring some kind of gratification to our lives. But I want you to know, child of God, that God wants you to hunger for him. He wants you to hunger for his presence, hunger for his righteousness. Are you hearing me? God wants you, amen, to hunger for the word of God, hunger for revelation of his word. How about hungering to uh, just to grow spiritually or just to get to the next level of faith in your walk with God? Amen. Our appetite has got to be for God and for the kingdom of God and for the things of God. Are you hearing me? The scripture declares, I think it's Luke 12 that says uh, that our life does not consist in the abundance of things. Are you hearing me? It says, take heed, amen, be watchful. Uh, don't, don't become covetousness because your life does not consist in the abundance of things. Are you hearing me? The only thing that is going to bring us gratification and satisfaction, amen, is God, the things of God, our purpose and our destiny in God. So now let's go right into the word of the Lord on today. Amen. Matthew's gospel 633, a very familiar scripture. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Are you hearing me? Seek first the kingdom. See, and that's why we're missing it. We've gotten our priorities out of order. Amen. We are seeking after things rather than seeking after God. But the scripture says, Matthew 6, 33, that if we seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, if we go after God first and the things of God first, he says, then all this 
external, all the things that you, you know, that may bring you some kind of, um, uh, you know, appeasing or, or satisfaction to your flesh, you know, your desires, all these things things will be added unto you if you put God first. Amen. The Bible declares in the book of Genesis chapter three, it talks about Adam and Eve. And the Bible says, and you all know this, that God told them not to eat of the forbidden fruit. Amen. But the Bible says in Genesis three and six, how that the serpent came and he beguiled Eve and talked Eve out of what God told them and talked her into what he had to say. And uh, so Eve, amen. Uh, the Bible says that she looked upon the tree and she saw that it was good for food and she saw that it was pleasant to her eyes. Are you hearing me? She saw that it was pleasant to her eyes. And so what Eve did was she took up the fruit and she ate and the Bible says, then she gave it to her husband and likewise he ate. But I, I want to zero in on this. It was pleasing to her eyes. It was pleasant to the eyes. I, I want you to know, child of God, you got to be careful what you set before your eyes. Are you hearing me? You've got to guard your eyes. Are you hearing me today? Glory to God. The scripture says, amen, that we can't set. No, David said it. I think it's Psalms 101. He says, I'm not going to set any wicked thing before my eyes. See, you got to make a covenant with your eyes. And you got to be careful, amen, that you don't look upon the things of this world so much so that you began to go after external things. Are you hearing me? You've got to be careful, set a watch on your eyes so that your eyes don't cause you to sin. Are you listening to me today? Glory to God. Be careful what you give attention to. Be careful what you set your focus on. Be careful what you look upon. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So now let's just keep going through the word of God. First John, amen, chapter two, verse 15. Let's look at this. The scripture declares in first John two fifteen. it says, love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Are you hearing me? It's not of the father. Are you hearing me? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I want you to know, child of God, that your eyes, amen, are important. Are you hearing me? And you've got to be careful that the devil doesn't get your attention off of the things of God and put your focus so much on the things of this world that you begin to develop lust and lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. You're wanting external things more than internal come on somebody, more than the things that God has designed for your life, the things that will keep you, the things that will satisfy you. Are you hearing me? There is nothing that will bring you gratification except your purpose and your destiny in God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Let's just keep going. First Thessalonians 5 and 22 says, abstain from all the appearance of evil. Amen. Don't set wicked things before your eyes. Make sure, amen, that you watch your eyes because I'm convinced that if like Eve, if you look on a thing long enough, you'll find yourself desiring. Wonder what it tastes like. I wonder what it feels like. I wonder what it smells like. I wonder. Come on. And you'll find yourself giving in to the enemy's trap. Let's keep going through the word of the Lord. Amen. Genesis gospel chapter 25 and verse 29. Now, we, I'm going to give you just a couple of examples of what are you hungry for? I want to show you through the word of God how people's hunger uh, got the best of them. Amen. How they seek to gratify their flesh so much so that they lost their destiny. They lost their purpose in God. Let's, let's find out. Genesis chapter 25, verse 29. Now this talks about Jacob and Esau. And these are like two brothers. Amen. These are two brothers. Amen. And, and the Bible says that Esau liked to work. He goes out in the field. He, he hunts. He does all of this kind of stuff. 
and Jacob stays home, but he's, 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 you know, one of those little boys like to stay in the house. He's cooking. So the Bible says that Esau comes in from a long day of work. He's hot. He's tired. Amen. He's hungry. He's famished. Amen. He's, he, he's, he says, I'm about to faint. You know, I need something to eat. And so the Bible says that Jacob is cooking a stew. And can you imagine Esau getting off of the fields, amen, smelling the aroma of the stew, desiring, famished, faint, just wanting something to eat so bad, amen. Bible says that Esau asked Jacob for something to eat. Listen to this, child of God. I want you to understand. Glory to God. Esau says, Jacob, I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. He says, I'm so hungry, I'm about to die. Are you hearing me? My appetite is out of control. Come on. My... You know, the things that gratify my flesh has gotten out of control. I'm not just talking about food, I want you to know. Amen. But there's something that is getting out of hand and out of control in your life. And Esau makes this statement. He says, I'm about to die. I want something to eat. And Jacob tells Esau, he takes advantage of Esau. He takes advantage of his vulnerability. He sees how vulnerable he is. He sees how desperate he is. And so he takes advantage of that. And he tells Esau, he says, if you give me your birthright, I'll give you something to eat. And the Bible says that Esau said, you know, listen, I'm about to die. Who cares about a birthright at this moment? Are you hearing me? Glory to God. There, you know, he felt like a pile of stew, a bowl of stew was more important than his birthright for the moment. Oh, my God. Are you listening to me? Some of you got to be careful, amen, that you don't abort your destiny or your purpose. You got to be careful that you don't sabotage, amen, and forfeit your blessings in God for something that is temporary. Are you hearing me? Esau literally forfeited his inheritance. Are you hearing me? He gave up what is rightfully, what was rightfully his for some temporary, temporary gratification, something that would just bring some temporal uh, satisfaction action for the moment. Are you hearing me? His, his birthright at the time was careless. I mean, he was careless with that. It, it, that wasn't important to him because there was something that was more appeasing, more, you know, uh, um, div, just, just, just hungry. He was just hungry for something more than his destiny. Are you hearing me today? So he says, what's, what's a destiny? What's a birthright? What's I'm hungry? Give me something to eat. I want you to know, child of God, that you got to be careful when you get hungry because when you get hungry, the enemy will always offer you something. Oh, my God. Mm. Are you listening? I said, when you get hungry, you got to be careful because the enemy will always offer you something. The devil looks for an opportunity to find you at a weak and a vulnerable place in your life. Are you listening? He's always looking for some moment and timing where he can get the advantage over you. Glory to God. And so if you find yourself too desperate, then you'll find yourself falling prey to the enemy. Tell your neighbor you ought to control your, control your appetite. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Control your appetite. Control what's driving you. Control, amen, your, your, the flesh. Control yourself. Glory to God. Control yourself. Amen. You're getting out of hand. Maybe you, you're, so, you're so bombarded with being the next great somebody or, or becoming famous or, or, you know, want this status quo. Amen. Come on. I want to be the next voice uh, of America or whatever the case may be. But you got to be careful that you you don't allow your appetite to get out of control because the devil will always offer you something. Are you listening to me? So Esau didn't consider, amen, his birthright. And, and, and Jacob took advantage of that. Glory to God. And he says, sell me your birthright. Are you listening? Sell me your birthright. And Esau, he gives it up. Amen. He substitute his, his, his spiritual inheritance. Are you hearing me? for a plate of food. He substitute. He gave up his spiritual position for something that was temporal. Are you listening to me, huh? He gave up, amen, his legacy, his destiny, his dynasty for something that would bring him gratification for the moment. Oh my God, this is good to me. Amen. So listen, child of God, you got to be careful that when you get desperate, the enemy will open doors. He'll cause doors to come your way. Watch this. 
He'll cause opportunities to come your way. And you got to be careful, amen, because every door is not a God door. Oh, my God. Every opportunity is not a God opportunity. See, but if you're not, if, you're ap if your appetite for success and, and gain and all of that, if it's not under control, you'll walk into every door that come your way and find yourself falling into the snare of the enemy. Are you listening to me? So be careful that you don't crave the wrong things in this season. My God, haven't your mama always told you don't eat at everybody's table? <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. See, you, you got to learn to eat before you go. Eat, eat at home before you go somewhere else. And what am I saying? I'm saying you need to be getting all you need to get. Amen. From your spouse. Mm, okay. You know, get all you need to get from your church. You know, get all the spiritual, whatever, get, get what you need to get. Eat at home before you go somewhere because if you go out there and you're not getting the kind of, your needs are not being met at home or your needs, spiritual needs are not being met at the church or what have you, then you'll find yourself hungry, open, desperate. Come on, and the devil will take advantage of you. Let's keep going on in the word of God. Amen. John's gospel, chapter four, verse six. Watch this, John four and six. The Bible talks about this woman, not just any woman, a Samaritan woman. Are you listening? My subject today is what are you hungry for? What are you hungry for? This woman, Samaritan woman, the Bible says that Jesus is coming through and it's about 12 noon and the Bible says that he stops at the well at Jacob's well, amen. And while he's there resting at the well, the Bible says that this Samaritan woman, amen, she comes to the well. The Bible says that she comes to the well because she's thirsty. Are you hearing me? Mm, glory to God. Amen, she's there because she's thirsty and you've got to understand that she oftentimes went to the well, amen, because she was thirsty. In other words, there's something that she's looking for. There's something that she's trying to find. There's something missing in her life. There's something that she needs to fulfill the void of the emptiness that's inside of her. And so she's always going to the well. Watch this. And the Bible says that it was custom for men to go to the well as well. But here's why the men went to the well. The men went to the well because they knew that they would always find a thirsty woman. Oh my God, are you listening to me? I said they went to the well because they always, they knew that they would always find a thirsty woman, a woman that was incomplete, a woman that was lonely, a woman that was desperate. Oh, y'all not witnessing. Glory to God, a woman, amen, that, that had something missing in her life and that was looking for something external to fulfill the missing pieces of her life, they knew that they would always find a thirsty woman. Are you hearing me? Amen. But today when she gets to the well, she meets Jesus. Are you hearing me? Amen. And Jesus asks the woman for something to drink. And the woman tell Jesus, I have nothing to draw with. Watch this. Glory to God. Have you ever come to the well with nothing to draw with? What am I saying? I'm saying this, that you're in need for something. Amen. And what you need is spiritual. I want you to know. But you're seeking and you're searching and you're looking for something. Glory to God. But you have nothing to draw with. In other words, amen. You have no more energy. You have no more strength. You're empty. You're depleted. Life has beat you up. Circumstances has gotten the best of you and you just have nothing to draw with. Oh my God, this is good to me. Are you listening? Watch this. And so she tells Jesus, I have, you know, I have nothing to draw with. Are you hearing me? And so the Bible, I'm just going to skim through all of this, glory to God, because Jesus is at the well, but he's there on a specific assignment. What he wants is not water. Are you listening? What he wants, amen, is to bring this woman to a place of wholeness and completeness because this is a woman that is constantly going to the well and coming up empty. Are you hearing me? Looking for something, but coming up empty. So the Bible says, amen, that Jesus uh, uh, offers the woman some water, amen. But this is the kind of water he offers her. He offers her living water. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. And he acts, amen. He, he, he says I, I, that I, I, have, I have this living water that I want to give to you. 
are you hearing me? He said, whosoever drinks of this water, that is the water in the well, he says, whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. He said, but if you drink of the water that I give you, you shall never thirst again. Are you hearing me? Can you imagine this woman looking for water, looking for something to fulfill her loan, her, 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 her emptiness, looking for something, and he's offering something that sounds like uh, it's sustainable. It sounds like it's something that's going to meet this need that she has. And so can you imagine how excited the woman gets when Jesus said, this water, amen, that you drink of, you'll never thirst again. You'll never have to come to this well again. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says in verse 15 that the woman tells Jesus, give me the water. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you saying that, that my loneliness, my emptiness, this thing that is void in my heart going to be fulfilled if I drink of the water? She said, give me the water. Are you listening? Glory to God. And so Jesus tells the woman, in verse 16, he says, go get your husband. Oh, my God, here we go. This is it. This is the meat of the message. He says, go get your husband. Jesus cuts through the chase, gets down to what I call the nitty gritty. You know, he gets down to the real reasons why he's there after all. And he says, go get your husband. And the woman says, I have none. And Jesus says, you've answered correctly. Glory to God. He says, as a matter of fact, you have had five husbands and the one that you're with now is not your own. Oh my God. Can you imagine what this woman must have thought at that moment? Are you hearing me? Because Jesus was tapping into something uh, uh, by revelation. As a matter of fact, he was uh, moving in the realm of the prophetic at this time and he was operating in the gift of knowledge and he sees something that is going on in this woman that she perhaps uh, was keeping to herself. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. I want you to know, glory to God, that, that, that she had met all of her husbands at the well. Are you listening? I told you that she went there many times. One time after one time after another time she met a man. Every time she went to the well looking for something that would keep her, she found herself leaving with a man. Glory to God. And every relationship that she got into fell apart. Amen. Because it's obvious that this external thing was not what she needed. There was something that was greater going on on the inside of her. Are you hearing me? She was thirsty for something greater. Are you listening? And Jesus, glory to God, he understands where she's at. And he understands that, that in order for him to legally offer her salvation, he has to get to the root of her situation. Oh my God, are you listening? In order for him to get her to the place and give her what she earnestly need, amen, which is salvation, Jesus has to, in order to give her legal salvation, he has to get to the root of her situation. Are you hearing me? So he cuts through the chase and he deals with the issue. He says, where's your husband? She says, I have none. He says, you're right, you got five. The one you with now is not yours. Listen to me, child of God. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Amen. Now, what, this is what the woman does. Amen. The woman tries to abort the, the conversation at that moment because here it is. Jesus is tapping by revelation knowledge. He's tapping into a very sensitive part of her, the part that she's not ready to confront. Are you listening? And so she tries to deviate from the conversation and she gets off into other things. She says, okay, so you're a prophet. Okay, so she say, well, you know, where should we worship? Should we worship on this mountain or in Jerusalem or where should we worship? Amen. And Jesus tells the woman, watch this, glory to God. He tells the woman that it's not about your physical position, but it's about your spiritual condition. Are you listening? I'll say it again. It is not about your physical position, but what God is interested in is your spiritual condition. So while she's talking about worship, well, he caps off of that and he says, this is, this is it. Glory to God. He says that the true worshipers shall worship me in spirit and in truth. Now, what is he talking about? What he's literally doing is, is telling this lady that, glory to God, uh, uh, you've got to come to the place where you're ready to reveal your pain. You've got to get to the place to where you're ready to reveal the matters of your heart because that's the real situation. Are you hearing me? You keep 
keep having man after man, but they're not solving your problem because your problem is deeper than something external. It's deeper than just having a man. Oh, my God, are you listening to me? He says, but the real worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. In other words, they would come to the place where they're going to reveal their hearts. Are you hearing me? What are you thirsty for? What are you hungry for? God want to give you life and life more abundantly. I'll be back in a moment. Destiny Calls is brought to you by Cornerstone International Ministries, Pastor Sylvester and Ursula Murphy. deeper relationship with God and wanting to learn it's more. It's at a great word. time. We meet once a week in the evening, so it's ideal for anyone who it's is It's very working. affordable. I drive about an hour um, to get here, and as long as there's a cornerstone school, school, I've been here. It's been such a here. lesson for me in my life. For me to learn more and more of the Word of God and apply it to my daily life. More and to um, be able to be more open and be there's more so open. much things you can learn about God on the surface level, but when you catch your net in a little bit deeper, there's so much things that you can get and excited about. And this is my second it. year, and I really love it. And at the time when I first started it, I just needed to be closer to God and a little word for myself, and it has changed I my life. I first heard about Cornerstone International uh, Ministry School of Theology when I was going through a very difficult uh, transition. Great teachers time. work with you. Your own time is live and it's hands on. Instructors are amazing. Any questions that you may have, they're willing to answer them for you. They take the time to really make sure that you get in the class for all of our lessons. The ghosts have fallen in our class many, many times. And so we have been excellent uh, instructors that have taken us over a course that was filled with the Holy Spirit of love. Well, child of God, I know you were blessed by the word of the Lord on today. What are you hungry for? You got to get your appetite under control. Amen. And you've got to begin to thirst and hunger for righteousness. And when you do so, God says that you will be filled. Are you hearing me? Like the woman at the well, the Bible says that when she heard Jesus, amen, the Bible says she got the waters, the living waters, and she ran back into the city and she told all the men, I love that, the men, she told the men, Come see a man, glory to God, that told me all about myself, that fulfilled every desire that I had in my heart. God is the real thing. I want you to know he'll quench your thirst, amen. He'll give you satisfaction. He'll fulfill every need in your life. I want you to stay connected to Destiny Calls, amen. We're coming on twice every other week to bring you the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. Why don't you go to our website, cornerstoneim.vpweb.com, see all of our upcoming events events. Amen. Why don't you drop me an email at let's talk church at yahoo.com. Amen. I'm excited to connect with you. Amen. God is going to do some fantastic things in our lives as you stay connected to Destiny Call. Amen. I want you to go, amen, and go to church on Sunday. You know, stay connected to the local church. Sit under good teaching. Glory to God. Amen. Hey, listen, you can even watch Destiny Call on the Thai TV programming as well. Thai TV online Org. We're getting the gospel of the kingdom to the body of Christ. Amen. Stay with God. Why don't you do that? Right? Yeah. Your destiny is calling you.